Hello. In this week's Torah portion, Shalach Licha, Moses sends 12 spies to scout the land of Israel at the request of the people. The people want this because they do not take God's words that the land is good and that they will be successful against its inhabitants. 10 of the 12 spies bring back an alarming report and say that the enemies cannot be defeated. Quote, the inhabitants are mighty and the cities are extremely huge and fortified. We are unable to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. The land consumes its inhabitants and all the people we saw in it are men of stature, giants, descended from the giants. In our eyes, we seemed like grasshoppers, and so were we in their eyes. God gets angry and decrees that the people will wander for 40 years in the desert. This will ensure that the offenders will die before reaching the land and that only their children will settle in it. What did the spies do wrong? Did they do what spies are supposed to do? I covered this in another Devar Torah and found 10 possible answers in the sources. First, they scared and demoralized the people. Second, they doubted God's power. Third, they wondered if God had changed his mind after Israel built the golden calf. Fourth, they did not report that the inhabitants may have feared Israel. Fifth, they were fearful of facing the inhabitants being former slaves. Sixth, they wanted to go on living in the desert, isolated and directly connected to God. Seventh, they reported by using alarmist language. Eighth, they reported to the whole people, not only to the leaders. Ninth, they spoke Lashon Hara against the land and against God. And then they were affected by the Israelites' distrust of God. Now let's ask the question, who were the spies? The Torah tells us all these men were leaders of the children of Israel. So they were not simple people. They were leaders to begin with. So they must have understood better than the common folk that God was with them, that God will protect them and allow them to conquer the lands. God had already proved his abilities. So why did they discourage the people? Hasidic sources conclude that the spy's fear was precisely that God would keep his promises. In the desert, God was taking care of them completely. Manna from heaven, water from Miriam's well, miracles to keep the pursuing Egyptians away from them, teachings. In the promised land, they feared God would be more distant, even while, even while still keeping watch over them. They would have to do things they did not have to do in the desert, fight battles, cultivate the lands, earn a living, and build an entire country, and think. In other words, they would have to live in the real world. So they resisted. Like most leaders, they did not welcome change. The fact that the spies intended to give an alarming report all along was already hinted at in the Talmud. Quote, the Torah says, and the spies went and they came. Rabbi Yohanan said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, this verse likens their going to their coming. Just as their coming back was with wicked counsel, so too their going to Eretz Israel was with wicked counsel, unquote. The Lubavitcher Rebbe further points out that it is easy to find God while living isolated and with no responsibilities. Another Hasidic luminary, Rav Nachman of Breslov, advocated doing just that every now and then. He preached that to be close to God, you have to speak to God as you would, as you would with a best friend in a natural setting such as a field or forest, among the natural works of God's creation, to avoid man-made distractions, and to speak to God in your own words, in your mother tongue, for at least one hour every day. He called it hitpodibut, meaning self-seclusion. 
It is central to his thinking. He described it as follows. It is very good to pour out your thoughts before God like a child pleading before his father. God calls us his children. As it is written in the Torah, you are the children of the Lord your God. Therefore, it is good to express your thoughts and troubles to God like a child complaining and pestering his father. As one commentator described it, during a session of Hidbodidut, the practitioner pours out his heart to God in his own language, describing all his thoughts, feelings, problems, and frustrations. Nothing was viewed by Rebbe Nachman as being too mundane for discussion, including business dealings, conflicting desires, and everyday interactions. Even the ability to properly articulate what one wishes to say is viewed as a legitimate subject to discuss with God. One should also use the opportunity to examine his behavior and motivations, correcting the flaws and errors of the past while seeking the proper path for the future." Unquote. But God wants us to live in the real world. It's difficult to find God in everyday life, surrounded by busy people who are sometimes animated by unholy motives. That is the challenge. So the spies were not afraid of failure. They were afraid of success. It is a common occurrence. Let's take an example. You are happy with your life. One day you're offered a new job. More pay, more perks, more impact. You know you can do it, so you're not afraid of failure. But it entails more responsibility, so it will require more of your time, which means less time for family, friends, and hobbies. More work, and let's say you're lazy. More scrutiny and media exposure, meaning less privacy. More managing and firing and causing pain, and this hurts you. More interaction with people at the new income level. They may not be your type. More interaction with people in general, assuming you don't like it. More envy and enmity generated by your success. And even more risks, meaning more liability for mistakes or possible threats. It will change your life. All change is painful. The fear of the unknown can be paralyzing it will lower your quality of life. So, re so you refuse. The world will have to miss your positive impacts. The price is too high. In 1971, psychologist Abraham Maslow called it the Jonah complex. In the Bible, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell the Assyrians to repent or he will destroy them. Jonah keeps refusing and escaping but God steers him back to his mission every time. Finally, he reluctantly accepts, warns Nineveh and they repent and God spares them. We may want to succeed, but fear what the new responsibilities entail. That may have been the spy's dominant thinking. Shabbat Shalom.